Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is CeeLo Green, and you are now tuned in to Joseph Jaffe is not famous. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. He is not famous at all. Check out this new streaming show. It is perfect. And if you don't, fuck you. <laughs> When it comes to chicken, I'm your guy. Blinking. I'll have what Joseph has. Look, somebody's talking about you. This is what we call the voice of God. Mm. Popping. Everybody just gets to focus on you. Grab me. Probably not the best thing for an introvert. I'm asking for you. Well, I like a good chicken sandwich. Touch me. Hi, David. Comment. Oh my God. Like. You're actually an identical twin. Push. Maybe I'll just ask Julie to talk about what it is to no. be an identical twin. Pick me up. No, you. It. Shouting. Surprise. I Jeremiah, just hang on a second. I just got a text. There's an edit for your new opening, Joseph. I, I feel really honored to have been here, man. You... But By the way, you've done a masterful job. Seriously. And it was such a joy. Thanks, Joseph. It's an honor. Good on you. This was a pleasure. I mean, you are a, the a prime example of how to pivot in this new environment. I wish everybody gets an opportunity to interact with Joseph Jaffe. Who needs cameo when I've got my own <laughs> personal cameo? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is a great week as I adjust my vantage point. There we go. That's a little bit better. It's a great week because I haven't done four shows in a long time, and this week you have four, four of the best. Tomorrow, Todd Kaplan, the CMO of Pepsi, and I've uh, I've seen the future. Well, actually, I pre-recorded him yesterday, so I know exactly what's going to be on the show. You want to know what a chief marketing officer of PepsiCo has to say about Web3, about courage, about innovation, about community? Well, you just got to tune in tomorrow. But today, look no further than Mike C-Rock Sirocco. And let me tell you, there are lawsuits pending because Diddy stole Sirocco from the original Sirocco, from the original Sirocco. You know, one of the beauties of clubhouse uh, i used to do a lot of rooms i used to lead a lot of rooms and then i sat back and i listened and as i've often said on the show your voice is the portal to your soul and i've been able to listen to mike many times lurking in the audience and uh, for me one of the greatest greatest benefits and utility of clubhouse is the ability to reach out and actually use it for guest relations and and bring on some amazing guests and so he will be coming onto the show shortly uh, but for now i want to go back to what i've been talking about this whole week last week as many of you know i was at the association of national advertisers masters of marketing hanging out with uh, pretty much the creme de la creme of the fortune 500 global 2000 CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, who's who in the zoo. And, uh, you know, I've been recording. In fact, I did a lot of recording of little vignettes. And in keeping with that, I'm going to play for you just another of my reflections. One more live quick vignette from the floor at the ANA Masters of Marketing. And one of the things that I haven't heard, heard a lot uh, from in this conference is audio. Now, we've heard about radio, sure. We've even heard about Sonic Branding. MasterCard have actually created their own unique sound, which they've incorporated, which is very interesting, into, into a song. They ended up partnering with a band 
Uh, it works so well that the band has actually created an entire album and every song subtly, you know, maybe even subliminally includes the jingle, but nothing on audio first, nothing on, for example, Twitter spaces or LinkedIn audio or Clubhouse or Discord. The power of not just audio, but live audio, not just live audio, but live communal audio. So an opportunity, no doubt. Yes, an opportunity, no doubt. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. Not one session was focused on audio, on on even podcasting. Um, but we're going to change a lot of that today. And we're going to make sure that we send out a message to the dollars out there, that they need to be invested in audio first. Now, one of the things I've been experimenting with Instagram is a little 99 cents a, a month. Uh, I am not going to retire on this. In fact, I'm not going to do anything on it. Uh, it's the lowest I could charge, 99 cents a month on Instagram. You can subscribe to these clips that you just saw, including one-minute highlights of every single interview, including the one that is happening in just the next few minutes. But now it's time to get to the seated soliloquy. And today, of course, as you no doubt know, it is always connected to my guest. Uh, we're going to talk about confidence today. We're going to talk about being unstoppable. Um, and so I decided to call this one confidence, as in conning yourself to believing perhaps sometimes you're confident. Look, we operate in a world where... There's a lot of alpha going on. There's a lot of alpha males. There's a lot of A-type. There are a lot of people that are projecting confidence out there, including yourself, but sometimes you don't feel that confident inside. So how do you fool everyone else? And how do you fool yourself? How do you convince yourself that you are in fact worthy, that you are good enough, that you are even better, that you are the best? I've always studied, I'm a huge English football fan, you know, the so soccer, and uh, I always notice how at the start of the season, one team, maybe one of the minnows, one of the um, smaller teams, they have two or three wins on the trot. Maybe they got lucky, maybe there was an own goal, maybe somebody got sent off, maybe there was a lucky deflection, and now suddenly they find themselves near the top of the table. And then on the flip side, one of the favorite teams has a spell of bad luck, maybe injuries, maybe a red card, maybe that own goal, and they find themselves at the bottom. And suddenly, confidence takes over. It's not about skill. It's not about talent. It's not about preparation or hard work. It comes down to the mental acuity or their mental ability to be able to dig themselves out of a hole or on the flip side, to maintain that, that opportunity, to maintain the chance, to maintain being out in front. If you can crack the confidence code, you can crack anything. You have the ability to, this is not about being delusional, although as we know from the great entrepreneurs of all time, Steve Jobs probably at the top of that list, you need to exist and live in a reality distortion field. You need to be able to convince yourself, for better or for worse, that you are God's gift without the hubris, without the pride, without the arrogance, with a degree of humility, but not too much humility because that humility will once again start to nag and start to convince you FUD yourself, self-FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt that you're not good enough. Well, today we're going to hear from uh, C-Rock himself, and we're going to talk about being unstoppable. We're going to talk about how to, you know, fuel yourself like a rocket ship to convert setbacks and, uh, and move forward and power forward and perhaps realize your potential, your God a given potential. Mike C. Rock Sirocco is the co-founder of the innovative tech platform Blueprinted. I can't wait to talk to him about it. The powerhouse behind the What Are You Made Of podcast and the best-selling author of Rocket Fuel Convert Setbacks Become Unstoppable. He's a performance coach, 
author, dynamic public speaker, tech visionary, and thought leader. He has been featured by Yahoo Finance as one of the top business leaders to follow in 2020 and is on a mission to build unstoppable people. He is consumed with a passion to help people break free from the confines of complacency and propel themselves to untapped levels of success. Uh, we are kindred spirits, let me tell you, Mike, because for me, the big enemy has always been complacency and mediocrity. That's the biggest enemy. Welcome to the show. What's happening, Joe? Great to be here. Uh, you know, I'm always filled with gratitude. Uh, every show that I go on, I always like to start off with gratitude because it's just an honor to be able to share my message, my story, and my thoughts and my experience. And so thanks for having me. And thanks for everyone that showed up to listen or watching the replay. And uh, you are guest number four. You're the 411. It's the perfect night. I like what's that. What's the What's the 411 on being uh, unstoppable? We will We will get to that uh, shortly. Now, one of the things that, uh, so I've been interacting with your wonderful executive assistant and and uh, I have a very sneaky little thing that I do, which is to ask people about their uh, fun facts about them. And they always wonder, why does he need these fun facts? And it's because I have the ability then to uh, embarrass them just slightly uh, in a segment that I call fun facts, because they are fun facts. So initially, I didn't get anything. And so I decided to uh, uh, take the initiative and uh, really go deep, deep undercover <laughs> and uh, and discover who is the... Who is the real Sea Rock, or more importantly, uh, what are the famous Sea Rocks of all time? And uh, so, the first one that I found, I really had to dig deep, is the uh, uh, a light cruiser from a Carillion Engineering Corporation. This is the Gazanti class cruiser that comes from Star Wars, uh, and it only costs 190,000 credits which is actually considerably less than what I had to pay to get the appearance of you on the show. So I think you were about 210,000 credits. Um, so <laughs> this, this was the first one. Now, what are the other famous sea rocks or crocs uh, in, in history? And of course, you know, I would be remiss uh, if I didn't talk about, uh, about the rapper sea rock. Didn't know that there was, I'm sure you know of the rapper sea rock, right? Uh, you know, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, you know, as I said, we have expert researchers here in uh, not famous land, also known as Google. Um, and then the third, of course, uh, is a croc in crocs, which is not a croc, I will tell you. So this was about as far as I could go. And then your EA delivered the fantastic news uh, that you played in a celebrity basketball game with T.O. himself. And we actually have a photo uh, of, of that celebrity <laughs> basketball game. It turns out though that you were the cameraman. I'm just, I'm, I'm just kidding. But tell us about the celebrity basketball game. Yeah, I have a friend that's a celebrity bodyguard, and he uh, had a celebrity charity basketball game here on the eastern shore of Maryland. And uh, he invited me to play. And I'm, I'm, I don't know. If many people know I'm five seven, so I'm not, you know, the basketball height. But I heard that there was going to be some celebrities and athletes and pro athletes, and I'm like, oh man, man. So I showed up and last minute I heard that Terrell Owens was going to be there. And, you know, I watched him growing up. I watched him, you know, for play for the Niners in Dallas and then my team, the Eagles. And um, I was like, I, I can't believe this is, this is happening. You know, and I not only got to play with him, but he was on my team and I got to throw him a pass. Uh, you know, it's just, it was this awesome experience to be around professional athletes and actually play a sport with them. And one thing I'll add to this was we were down by 18 points in the fourth quarter. And I thought, you know, these guys don't really care about the celebrity charity game, you know? So he comes over to the bench and he says, Hey, you guys got to get your minds right right now. We're going to come back and win this thing. I don't want to, I don't want no attitudes, no negatives, everybody in the game. And he went and scored 22 points in the fourth quarter and missed a layup at the buzzer for us to win by one, but we ended up losing by one. But uh, nonetheless, it was just amazing to watch the, the competitiveness of a professional athlete, even in a celebrity basketball game. I was ready with the the, the, the buzzer beating sound, um, but it, it's an amazing story because you know, as the saying goes, you know, winners never quit, quitters never win. And and here is someone that even in a, in a celebrity in a charity game, he's still competitive. It's in his nature, which is to do his best, to not be complacent. Um, and I mean, it's like proof positive for everything that you stand for. 
Yeah, I mean, have you heard of the saying? I think it was uh, Coach K from Duke said, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah. And, you know, that was a prime example of that. And I don't know about any of the other players, but I needed to learn something because uh, I, I don't know how to pace myself. I was out there running up and down the court, and I couldn't figure out why I was so out of breath. And I'm I'm really good shape. I mean, I work out all the time. I run. I, I do cardio. I couldn't figure out how are these guys not breathing heavy. Then I started to realize they have this method that, you know, that if they play basketball a lot, they have this method of pacing themselves. And they know when to turn it on. They know when not to. And I, I just hustle all the time. So that was a good lesson to learn that pacing yourself isn't a bad thing. Um, so you can go the, the marathon rather than sprint. <laughs> Well, you've, you've given me a, a gift already because one of the things that I now do in almost every single uh, episode is I tell people what their next book uh, is going to be called and yours clearly uh, is going to be called Pace Yourself. I mean, I, I love that idea. I love the idea of, you know, timing, of, of being able, I mean, and even if we think about our lives and our careers, I'm, I've just turned, uh, I think I'm 51. I don't know. <laughs> it became a blur. Um, but I feel like I'm just getting started. And, and you know, today, especially over the last two and a half years, people are so burnt out because they've just been hustling and hustling and hustling. And clearly the answer, like T.O., is the ability to know when to push and double down and press and when to just kind of take your foot off the gas just a little bit and maybe coast uh, and, and allow yourself to regain the energy. Yeah, you know, I have a saying, thrust is a must. I wrote a book called rocket fuel and convert setbacks become unstoppable. And in this book, I talk about the fact that, you know, you need to move fast when you need to move fast. And I think when you, when I say thrust is a must, like thrust is something that's a propellant, it pushes you. And then you have to be able to take some time to actually use that force that you just pushed into whatever you're doing. And so it's a, it's, it's a, it's a kind of a, really thing to think about that you cannot thrust all the time. Otherwise it wouldn't be thrust. That would be just your pace. That would be your, your speed. Right. So there's a lot of imaginative, uh, I, I should say, um, visualizations that I like to use with things. And, uh, that, that, that relates to that basketball game very well. So, uh, definitely, definitely move fast when you need to, but, but enjoy or use that momentum that you've gotten, that force, that you, that energy that you've gotten from that thrust. And that works in business and life. You know, yesterday, I'll tell you, Joseph, I, I was really not feeling myself yesterday. And I say myself, I'm usually go, go up, up tone, like just fired up. I don't know what it was. I, I, I just, uh, I just understand though, that some days are going to be like that. And I got out and I walked and, you know, I walked four miles. I did a Stairmaster four miles yesterday. I, I, uh, made sure my diet was in check. I just go back when I feel like that and I go back and check things like, well, okay, where am I off? Is there some misalignment? Because uh, I think that that's a wake-up call sometimes uh, when you get feelings like that. So uh, I'm not sure where I was going with that, but yeah, so. No, I was think <laughs> I was actually thinking as you, as you were talking about thrust, which is, it's so true. It's, it's actually quite profound, which is if you're just thrusting all the time, you're not actually thrusting anymore. That becomes the default which means you don't have anything in the tank, you don't have the gas, you don't have the reserves to push forward when you need to, but also you're going to run out of fuel, you know, to to extend the metaphor. And so the word that popped into my mind as you were talking is timing. Timing is everything, yeah. you know, and, and you don't have unlimited, endless amounts of energy or thrust. Sometimes, sometimes you do need to dig deeper like yesterday, um, but timing is everything in life. Um, and, uh, so how do we become masters of time? How do we become timing experts when the world is so uncertain and invariably we always look back and go, I acted too soon. I took too long. Um, is, is timing ever perfect? I don't, I think perfection is not perfect. I never think perfection is perfect. I think perfection is a dangerous thing to, to shoot for. Um, and, uh, you know, so here's the thing with time, man. First of all, that thrust is a must came for me when I thought about the, uh, quote by Winston Churchill, when you're going through hell, keep going. And I thought to myself, if I'm going through hell, I don't want to just keep going. That's not strong enough. I got to thrust through hell. So for me, when, uh, when things are going not the way I want them to, if I'm in the suffering mode, so to speak, and there's always somebody worse off than you, but if you feel like you're suffering 
for me, that's the mode when I need to thrust. And then when things get better, I want to continue to do what got me there. However, I want to enjoy, as far as time goes, I want to slow time down in that mode because I want to enjoy the fruits of my labor or the good times, right? So I think that it's important that when, when things aren't going as the way you know you want them to, is to get through those as quickly as possible and, and make time go faster then. And this is all, by the way, I think you mentioned this in the beginning about reality and, you know, you, in life, we can play whatever video. If we're watching YouTube videos, if we're watching Netflix, we can choose whatever video that we want for our life. And that means that we can choose the speed of that video. Have you ever watched a YouTube video or did a, did a digital training course and you didn't want to watch that video the whole time it took, so you sped it up? Mm. You know, sometimes I'll watch YouTube videos at one and a half to two times. I'll get the content. I can hear it. I take it in. But I control that speed. And I think of life that way. I mean, it's such a rich idea of of not just so much timing, but the idea of uh, <laughs> it makes me think of that um, uh, that movie Click um, with Adam Sandler and uh, and William Shatner and the magic remote control. And and he learns like when he's having a fight with his wife, he can pause her, go to the other room or he can fast forward. And it actually learns all of his behaviors. And one day he wakes up and all these kids are old. Uh, and he's missed out on their lives. Um, and uh, and look, you know, I sometimes do wish I could speed up and fast forward through the fights with my wife. Uh, not that I've had any, but if I were to have any, that's what I'd want to do. But y you've actually applied a very interesting spin because um, a lot of people will want to speed up during the good times, press down, put their foot on the gas. And you're saying, no, in these moments, in these beautiful moments, slow down, appreciate it. Instead of trying to maximize and milk everything, just enjoy it, you know, and be more aware and more present and more mindful. And then as far as the hell part is concerned, you know, don't spend any time on anything that gives you pain. Get the hell out of Dodge, you know, and, and kind of leave it behind you. And again, there are other people that will say in that situation, no, kind of slow down in those moments, take it in, feel the pain, you know, enjoy the masochism. And you're saying, hell no, no masochism for me. Thanks very much. Well, it depends on what mood I'm in. <laughs> so we're uh, entrepreneurs. I, we have to be masochists, right? Yeah, yeah. What I tell you is not always truth, uh, you know, an absolute truth. It's my experience. Now I have a club, you know, that I spend time in, in, uh, in clubhouse called the Sea Rock Experience. And I, I named it the Sea Rock Experience because it's not for people to experience me necessarily. It could be played that way, but it's more for me to share my experience. And the things that I share are from my thoughts, my views, my experience. And I bring my friends in there to share their experiences, but it doesn't mean it's absolute truth. So there are times where, like, you know, if I'm in the gym and I'm going at it, you know, and it hurts and this and that, I'll push harder to, and really lean into that. But when I'm in a phase of, <clears throat> right now. And by the way, a lot of people aren't transparent like I am. I, I, I think a lot of people are so concerned with how they look and how they're perceived by other people. I'm in a business right now. I have the mortgage business and rates are going through the roof. Business is slowed, cut in half or more. I'm not in a good place mentally as far as like, not, I wouldn't say mentally. I, I would say like with the results, right? I'm not happy where the results are right now. And so, you know, I, I think to myself, you know, I don't want to be in this situation and enjoy and endure this, like this, this pain, so to speak. I want to move fast through this. How, can, how fast can we get through this period of time of rates being where they are and get back to where we were before, or get business back to the way it was? I don't want to linger in here. Now, if I'm in a gym, like I said, I want to linger in that. I'm running, doing some jogging. I want to linger in that. It's just a, it's just a you know, you, you pick your spots, right? So, but then when things, then I just want to clarify when things are good, I still believe in momentum and taking advantage of all the momentum that you have when things are good. I just think that I want time to slow down at that time. I want time to slow down. Like I, I, I want to keep producing. I want to make sure I'm taking advantage of all that, but I really do want to smell the roses. I want to look around and appreciate beauty and the aesthetics of things. I think that's important. And, uh, you know what, there's, a, there's aesthetics when, when things are going bad too, to pay attention to. Yesterday when I took my walks, Joseph, I took four walks that are a quarter mile each in between my calls. 
and I really paid attention to nature, looking around, looking at the sky, like just smelling, or just appreciating things. And it makes a difference. And so, you know, I think, I think really appreciating things at all times makes sense. But anyway, just know that we can all control time. All of us can control time. It's a, it's a myth to think that you are not in control of time. I, I think it's such an important point. And, you know, one of the things I do when I mentor startups is I say to them, there are four things that are going to, you know, ultimately be responsible for your success. Two, you can control, two, you cannot. What you can control is the idea and the execution of that idea. What you cannot control is timing and luck. But then I basically say, but what if you can bend time? And what if you can cheat time? And what if you can time travel? And Great time Ex exactly and then of course we all know that as far as luck is concerned there is the definition luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity that is timing so can you actually as gary player once said the more i practice the lucky i get um and what you realize is the more you do it and therefore the, and by definition the more you fail also the more luckier you can be at being able to spot the right opportunity in the right place at the right time yeah, 100%, man. I mean, uh, I play golf. And when, like right now, I haven't played a lot. I haven't practiced a lot. And I went out and played in a money tournament recently and just got my butt kicked, man. And it didn't feel good. And I wasn't very lucky. <laughs> so 100%, man. And, and same thing in business. Like, you know, I have two tech startups right now. I'm working on a third. And in these tech startups, when we're first starting out, like I'm doing one-on-one -on -one demos over and over and over again with people doing calls yeah you see blueprinted right there's one of them I, i've blue i've demoed blueprinted probably 400 times or more um just trying to get the messaging right trying to do reps put the reps in podcasting i've done over 700 podcasts in the last three years including my own show and other people's to put the reps in to get good if if you were to call me and said hey i need you on my show in five minutes i got an open spot can you fill it i could do it because i'm confident in the reps that i put in and we would have a great show. Reps matter. Consistency matters. And uh, yeah, luck comes with that for sure. Reps matter. I mean, it's uh, whether we whether we talk about uh, the 10,000 hour approach um, or just putting in the reps, putting in the time, putting in the effort, the, you know, going back to um, Churchill again, uh, one of the greatest quotes from Churchill uh, is that success is defined as moving from failure to failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Um, and I just think that w those are those are fighting words to live by. Yeah, I mean, I think that we all lose enthusiasm a little and we just have to catch ourselves when we start to feel like that as quickly as possible. And understand that when we try something, what we're really trying for is we're trying to gather data. It's data collection. Anytime you attempt something, there's opportunity to gather data that you can use to further your, your mission. And so I always understand that. I just never quit, man. Like there's no quit. There's adjustments. There's, you, you are allowed to change your mind. You, you know, everybody has a permission that, that you, you have the ability to change your mind. But just if you're going after something, just understand that every attempt that you're going after is not the attempt. It is an attempt to go after something. And if you get it really quickly, great, but you won't appreciate it as much, by the way. But when you make an attempt, gather data, realign, gather data, realign, and you just do it over and over again until you get to the target. I also think this, this idea of, ch of you're allowed to change your mind, it's actually very, very powerful because oftentimes, you know, we'll hold ourselves to an unfair or a high standard or someone else will say, well, you said that your word is your bond. You know, you, you reneged your, your, you know, your integrity, you're out of integrity. And, and there's also the ability to say, you know what? I changed my mind or am I allowed to change my mind? It doesn't mean completely disregard a promise you made, but there's something I think very human um, and it's scary as, as shit which is like the ability to say, can I change my mind? Am I allowed to change my mind? Or, you know, it's like uh, in chess, they have like touch move. Once I've touched the piece too bad, you can't take it back. Yeah, look, here's the thing. You, you're you going to upset some people in life, but you always have to look out for yourself first because without taking care of yourself first, you're not going to be able to take care of other people. And if people get upset with you, 
that's their problem they got to work through as far as I'm concerned. But as far as integrity goes, communication. So if I tell somebody I'm going to do something and I can't do it, as long as I communicate with them and renegotiate the situation, then I don't see a problem with that. And if somebody has an issue with something they told me that they were going to do, but then they come to me and they communicate with me about it, I'm open and understanding that people have the right to change their mind and change things up as far as that goes. But we have to talk about it. Communication. Communication solves all problems and is the, also the cause of all problems. And so that's where integrity comes in with communication. So for me, man, like if somebody gets upset with something that I do and I'm com confident in that I held my standards that I expect of myself, then that person's going to need to work through those things on their own. That's the way I look at it. No, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm taking in this, 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 uh, this concept. And also I was, I was smiling because you, you, you almost, you almost let loose with, uh, with, with the, with the bomb. Um, and I was like, you can do that on the show. It is. <laughs> oh, I don't even know that I did that. I didn't even notice. Sorry. I, I, think, I, I think I saw like, and then it was like, I was like, come on. No, I'm oh, that, 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 you know what? I, I, and I'm apologizing not because I almost said it because I didn't say it and I'm allowed to. <laughs> yeah. You're, you, you're yeah. allowed to. Yeah. yeah I didn't even realize I did it though. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I, I'm, you know, you saw CeeLo at the start. I mean, you know, his brief was, oh, yeah, I did. I did see that. Yeah. It was, was very, very clear. Um, we got some comments coming in. Uh, Bez said, uh, with respect to what we we're discussing earlier, I agree. Perfection can be dangerous. It can freeze us in our tracks. I prefer taking action and along the way I'll improve. Uh, Sean Moss on LinkedIn said, takes courage to admit that you are changing your mind. I, I agree. That's and, uh, and PF said, great question. I struggle between word is your bond and changing your mind. Thank you for the answer, C-Rock. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, look, here's the other thing. Um, courage, right? Let's talk about courage for a second. Let's. Yeah, I mean, um, a lot of people get mixed up and they think that keeping, their, keeping the, the same course and staying on that course and not changing course is not quitting. To me, if you're going somewhere and it's not working out the way you wanted it to or the way you expect it to, and you keep going, I believe you're quitting on your dream. You're quitting on the original mission. Because if you think about it, if it's not going to get you to where you want to go and you're not moving as fast as you want to go and you don't make any changes and you're concerned with what other people think, to me, that's quitting on yourself. Think about it that way. It's a different perspective to look at. You know, I, I, I want to have the life of my dreams. My mission, Joseph, by the way, is all people are unstoppable to live in a life of their dreams. So I feel, filter everything through that mission. Now I say all people because I really care about all people, but I believe that if you want something for everyone, you'll get it for yourself. I think there's a cycle there. You know, it's just like celebrating wins for people. And when you see other people succeed, you should be celebrating that because you would want people to celebrate you for winning and you want to win. So you know, I, I, I just really think that quitting can come in different forms. It's not about all about, you know, going after something and then keep going after it, even if it's not working. And as long as you keep doing that, you're not quitting. You know, you, what are you placing your quit on? That's the question. Yeah, I mean, so maybe the call to action is get your quit on. Uh, get your quit on because sometimes by not quitting, you are quitting because... The not quitting, and Lord knows that I've done this many times, it's the pride that keeps you going. It's the not wanting to embarrass yourself or show your vulnerability or admit that you basically screwed up. And so by keeping going and saying, I can't quit now, I've come so far, you've actually, as you said, quit on yourself. That, that's well, a really interesting flip. Yeah, I just thought of one story, uh, one story that I have like really on my whole life. You know, I, I grew up in a broken home. I don't remember my parents ever together. And I went through the custody battles and the child support battles. And then you add step parents in the mix and everybody doesn't even get along. And I went through all that as a kid. And I moved from my mom's house, who I lived with until I was eight. She was moving on to her third marriage. And I'm like, you know what? I, I don't want to learn another man's rules and live in another man's house. So I decided to switch it up and told her, I want to move in with my dad and give my dad's house a shot. Right. So, okay. Now I'm making a decision and I'm going to go try that. Now, during that period of time when I made that move, 
I learned a lot, but I went through a lot of abuse and there was a lot of conflict in that house, a lot of fighting. And I realized that this is not what I want anymore. Maybe two years in, this isn't what I want anymore. Now, I could have sat there and put up with all that and, and endured the abuse and the, the, the bad environment. Or I could have said something about it, which I did. And I'm, I'm, I'm about 10 years old at this time. And I said, you know what? I don't want this anymore. But at the end of the day, the grand goal for me was I want to be in a household that's loving, fun, enjoyable to be in, conducive to growth, right? That was my mission. My mission wasn't to move into my dad's house, for example, as a kid. That wasn't the mission. That was just a part of the thing I had to do to go on that journey I was thinking of. But then when I realized that that wasn't going to lead me there, then I told my mom about what was going on. They had to take care of the court thing. I had to go through a whole bunch of crap. And then I moved back in with my mom, which was more conducive to growth and what I wanted to do as a kid and understanding where I wanted to go as a kid. I, by the way, I was really mature at a young age because of the stuff I went through. And I was always really self-determined on what I wanted to accomplish. And so I, at a young age, I've always understood that I could change my mind. And, and, and I don't, you know, I don't ever second guess that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's uh second, well, second guessing in general um, is, is part of the whole self fudding uh, syndrome. Um, when we doubt ourselves, when we doubt our decisions in instead of being able to just adapt and, you know, as the, as we've heard, there's no doubt in clubhouse a million times, these are not the things that happen to you. These are the things that happen for you. Uh, it's hard at the time to see the good in something bad. Um, and sometimes there might not be, and, and sometimes we might not even realize at the time. Um, but if we can just figure out how to bring it all together and how to just keep moving forward, we have the ability to move forward. Yeah. And you know, the other thing I'll add is that I keep up tone emotionally as much as possible. I try to stay exhilarated, exciting, wanting to make sure that when I'm around people that I'm not pulling them down, I'm elevating. I really believe that vibes and emotions are contagious. And so I also know that the higher emotional condition you stay in, things seem to work out, Joseph. And I don't know whether it's things really change or it's just your perception of the story that you're putting on everything changes, right? And so either way, it doesn't matter. If everything works out, if you stay higher up in emotional condition, then, then why would we not focus on that? Realizing that if you come down and you're angry, you're envious, you're sad, you're bored, any of these conditional states, then actively doing something about it means that you're going to have things work out for you. And the longer you stay in those states, things won't work out. Why do we not intentionally make sure that that happens? And is it because people don't know about it? They don't understand the power of your emotional condition? They don't understand that they have responsibility over that or the ability to change that? I don't know the answer, but I know that now I know this. and I've discovered it. I, I make sure I stay uptone, especially not just for myself, but for other people as well in my environment. Uh, a higher emotional ground and being able to be upbeat. I was thinking even the concept of saying proactive, um, pro as in, as opposed to con, right? Confidence, but proactive, but there's this idea of being active and the opposite of being active is, is, is not so much complacency, but laziness. And so today is a uh, wellness Wednesday. Our correspondent is Whitney Lauritsen and, uh, and she sent this, uh, segment in, uh, and the word laziness is in the title. So let's watch what she has to say, and then we can see. I never watch them in advance, but they always somehow are perfectly uh, timed. So let's see if I can keep my streak going. I've been reading a few books by this social psychologist named Dr. Devin Price. One of the books is called Laziness Does Not Exist. Highly recommend it. It's a great audio book and also a great book read. <laughs> and one thing that's really stuck with me after I was listening to parts of the audiobook recently was how people in general are only capable of doing about three hours of work a day. And yet many of us work at least eight hours a day. It depends on the structure of your job. Or I should say many of us are expected to work an average of eight hours a day, five days a week. This resonated with me because I've never been somebody fully capable of that. Back when I had full-time jobs before I started working for myself, 
I really struggled. I struggled with the hours, the time of day. I felt like I was really only productive for a few hours, but because I had that assigned amount of time, I had to stick around and at least pretend that I was getting work done. We're seeing more and more people come out about this now and and saying that they're really just going through the motions. Uh, They're doing quiet quitting. Uh, They're doing various things to fit some sort of a standard put in place by either their employers or society. Now, if you run your own business, an entrepreneur, if you're a consultant, and you know, you're know you not uh, basing your life around these set hours, it's still really worth considering because you might still be carrying shame. You might still be thinking that you should be working a certain amount of time each day. Otherwise, you could be perceived as lazy. And maybe it's time we switch that mentality. Worth a thought, at least. I think my streak is going because we we heard about quitting. Um, what do you think, uh, Mike? Is there such a thing as laziness? Uh, I absolutely think there is. Uh, that's just an adjective to describe someone, but I don't believe that somebody should label themselves. So you know that you know lazy. That the, the word lazy is an adjective, and um, you can describe things as that if you want to describe somebody by doing that. I don't think that's elevating anyone. Um, but I don't think we should label ourselves lazy. You know, to me, I do an assessment pretty much daily on, am I moving towards my targets and goals? Am I moving towards the life of my dreams? And what am I doing that's not leading me there? And I just do a process of elimination and adding, adding and eliminating. And so I don't ever think of myself as lazy. Now, I may be in a state of condition sometimes that I feel lazier than others. Um, so yeah, I think there, there's definitely a validity between, uh, or, or for the word lazy. I just don't believe that people should label themselves that. Uh, and I don't think it's very uplifting that other people call people lazy. And I think maybe, uh, the antidote to all of this is every hour of your pro of your productive day in between, take a 15 minute walk, uh, like, and, 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 uh, you know, open up clubhouse and uh hear what's going on in in the sea rock experience i mean it seems like yeah, a definitely. fairly fa- fairly obvious uh you know take advantage of the downtime and while you're out uh attuning and being in touch with yourself and with nature um you join the club and and hang out and by the way in in to your point in a happy house right now with clubhouse and their houses in a happy house houses should be happy um going all the way back to your insight about your childhood. Yeah, 100%. And I, you know, look, the other thing is, is a lot of these rooms are, they get kind of boring. And I think it's fun to, to joke around and, and skirt the line a little bit of going over the line with some things, not offending like directly anybody in particular, but just fun, you know? And I, and I think that a uh, fun house, happy house, but also educational uplifting. Uh, that's my intention for, for the Sea rock experience. And the other thing, Joseph, what I have the, like in this mode that I'm in right now with my main source of income for the years has been the mortgage business and it's slowing down because of what's going on. So my thing is kick it in the gear. I got an energy outflow right now, like more than I was before, which was a lot. I need to like thrust is a must. Now's the time for thrust. So I just want to outflow and pour into people and give to people through the clubhouse rooms. Uh, I'm actually moving my podcast. What are you made of over to fireside? And we're going to be doing a live show Monday, Monday through Fridays to schedule right now at noon. And I'm going to be bringing guests onto Fireside and building an audience there and just outflowing and trying to like infiltrate other communities with my knowledge, expertise, my experience, and just find my people that I vibe with and align with me. And the ones that don't, that's fine too. I don't worry about that too much. Um, but I think everybody right now, if you're going through a time right now where, you know, maybe, yeah, I don't know if we're in a recession or not. I don't know what's going on. I know prices are up for everything, right? But if you're going in a time when it's not, ideal the way you want it extrovert push energy out because understanding that if you push energy out it'll cycle back and you'll get back what you push out and that's what mode i'm in right now joseph i have uh i'm very intentional with just doing as many podcasts as i can my rooms in clubhouse and and the fireside app moving it over there and just pushing content out like crazy and i'm noticing it with my instagram account it's growing like crazy you know and uh 
I think I think that people have to be dedicated to doing that instead of introverting. Sometimes we pull back and we introvert and we contract and we think to ourselves, like, am I doing things right? What should I do? Don't think too much. Just act. As long as you know your mission and you're clear on your mission and it aligns with your mission, go. Push out. So that's what mode I'm in right now. Love it. And the, and, and the studio audience loves it as well. Uh, PF says positive flow. And Bez says your vibe will attract your tribe. Uh, no doubt. Let's spend the um, a little bit of time now talking about this um, this word, this concept that you've that you're developing, that you are really, really becoming known for, which is this concept of being and becoming unstoppable. And uh, it's funny because when I went and did a little bit of of uh, of research, um, that's where I made the connection to confidence. And so I always find a quote. This is the quote that I found for you. Uh, confidence is key. Once you have that, you are unstoppable. And, and this is actually from uh, a, a sports star, George Weyer's son, uh, soccer player, Timothy Weyer. Um, and uh, so I would love for you to chat about this idea of becoming uh, unstoppable. When I kind of attach the dots or connect the dots, I see you know a little ingredient with respect to confidence, I see this idea even in the in the title of the book, converting setbacks. Um, what does the formula, the recipe look like to becoming unstoppable? Well, the rocket fuel law is what I wrote about. And I noticed something in my life that no matter what happened to me, uh, I always excelled. And I just analyzed my life as a as a kid all the way up. And no matter what, I just I, when I accomplish something, I'm always like, okay, what's next? And when things get bad and how, how am I doing that? So I had to, I wanted to analyze this so I could teach it to other people and share it with other people. And i what I found is, is in life, if you set a target or mission and you take everything that would come your way, that would stop or slow you down and you store it in your tank. Remember I'm a visualizer guys and imagery. You store it in your tank, your fuel tank, instead of your trunk. Not only is this stuff out of your way, but now you have fuel that you can use and then you become unstoppable. Now, most people keep it in their trunk. They keep all the toxicity, the, the discouragement from other people, um, all the suppressive factors out there. They put it in their trunk. They weighs them down, and it slows them down. If you can imagine a car with a trunk full of bricks, it's not going to move very fast, and it could stop because the tires could get wore out from the rims or from the frame of the car riding on the tires. I think about this in my life, and I realize that, okay, if I take all that stuff, I'm unstoppable. Now, here's the other key. I also realize that all insecurities in life or lack of confidence stem from not knowing something. Think about that. Anytime you felt insecure, it's because you didn't know something. And when I realized that, okay, well, knowing I don't need to actually have experience or reps. Here's another thing I want everybody to think about. You, a lot of people think you need experience to be able to do something. That's not the case. That's a falsity. If you know enough about what you're trying to do, you can do whatever you're trying to do. And basically give you an idea here. Like if you were going to fly a plane, you do not need experience to fly a plane if you have every piece of knowledge that you need. Think about it. Most people think they need experience. The experience gives you what? Knowledge. That was a question, Joseph. You're, this, that was two-way communication. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm, I'm, I'm just imagining myself flying a plane and, and the screaming people at the back of the yeah. aircraft. I'm not saying it would be a smooth ride, but... No, what I'm saying is, the, is the, parrot, the parrot was stunned. You stunned me into, yeah. <laughs> into thinking that I can fly a plane. You can, you can. Experience gives you knowledge. So my point is, is knowledge is what we should be seeking. And so anytime you feel an insecurity in some area, if you feel lack of confidence in some area, learn about it, Get gain knowledge, gain wisdom. And you can do that through experience or you can do it through studying or mentorship. I do believe you need to take action to really pick up something. And that's where Blueprinted come in, came in. It's one of the platforms that we're working on. Blueprinted is, you know, instead of a course content platform, it's more task-based, step-by-step processes to achieve an outcome. I believe action is necessary. So many people sit in clubhouse rooms or listen to podcasts or read books, and then they don't do anything, right? They just, they just don't do anything. And I think that's a problem. So what we've done with Blueprinted, like you see there, Learning Reinvented, following experts down paths of success through easy, fast track, uh, uh, task-based learning journeys, which build confidence along the way. 
And um, you see, we have some creators in there putting their blueprints in there now. We're working on adding more and we're doing demos every Friday, live demos. Instead of doing the one-on-ones that I've done many of, I said, you know what? I got to figure out a way to do this exponentially. So now I do one to many. Um, and I'm also looking for anybody that's listening. And if anybody knows someone or the, they themselves have an audience and they would like to do a webinar with me, we're looking for strategic partners to come in and work with us on Blueprint. We know we can't do this by ourselves. We need people. And I'm looking for the right people that want to be a part of something and, you know, always wanted to be a, some, you know, involved with a tech company, but never had the ability to think about this. Uh, uh, Kajabi, Kajabi is a course platform and there was, um, man, his mind, his name just slipped my mind. Uh, oh man. Anyway, this gentleman, uh, he actually went and partnered with Kajabi Instead of all affiliate commissions that he brought in, he turned some of his affiliate commissions into equity in the company and the company went to be on, you know, worth billions. And so we're looking for people that want to do that with us because this company is going to take off. It is going to be worth, I, I don't want to put a number on it, but it's going to be worth a lot. And we're going to help a lot of people in the process. Me, 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 choose me, choose me, choose Let's go. Me, 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 this guy, this guy. <laughs> And by the Come way, on. it's cool. It's cool to be early in tech and a tech platform. It's cool to be the one that brings this, brings this new platform to your community. I love it. I mean, I, I love the disrupting the status quo, uh, bite size information, uh, being able to, you know, as the old saying goes, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Um, so anything that's going to reimagine, that's going to disrupt, that's going to reinvent um, I'm, you know, I'm even thinking of taking, there's so much knowledge, uh, in terms of how do you start, how do you start your own talk show? Um, there, you know, even I, I teach at NYU, I listen, I'm, I'm all in. I, I see, I see the become a creator. I'm, I'm like, I'm applying, you know, I don't, I, I don't know whether I'll be accepted, but shit, I'm going to try. Let's go. Well, listen, we accept everyone that wants to be unstoppable that want to help people, we accept them. And if they, if they have problems, we're there to help them, you know, and we're, we're into building people, you know, I have a company called, man, I have a lot of companies, <laughs> but one of my main companies is people building, people building incorporated. And we do a lot of things to create unstoppable people in that that's the mission uh, for that company. And so if somebody, if I ever see somebody struggling, you know, and I hope they want help when I try, but I don't wait to see if they want help. I try. If they don't want help, I'll find out very quickly because <laughs> I understand some people have a warped uh, definition in their mind or warped meaning of help. They feel like help is not a good thing. They feel like people take advantage of you when they try to help you and all that. And you find that out from trying to help someone. But if somebody comes on a blueprinted and you know they want to come in, we, we, we welcome everybody because we'll build you into who you need to be. It's, fan it's, it's fantastic. And you know the, the thing is that we have so many opportunities now to connect, to inspire, to engage, to transact. Um, I'm a huge fan of being able to use all this incredible native, you know, even if, even if I think about all these little video vignettes that I created at last, uh, last week's conference, I got about nine or 10 or 11 of them. And they're, you know, and, and it's like, I'm sure you've read the book or you know of the book Atomic Habits, um, but anything that you can do regularly, Anything that you can do that becomes almost um, like part of your life, it it just becomes a grounding. It doesn't become monotonous. It doesn't necessarily become rote, but it can actually fuel you towards becoming unstoppable. Yeah, you know, I think stacking consistent actions, thoughts, words, your environment, consistent over a long period of time changes who you become. You know, like, I, I really feel like you won't recognize yourself if you string along consistencies. The only problem I have, though, sometimes with habits is that it takes away sometimes your self-determinism. And I don't, I'm not a fan of that. I'm a fan of being able to change direction, change my mind, do what I want to do whenever I want to do it. Understanding that I'm a very spiritual person, by the way, Joseph. So understanding that this body that I have here to me and I, I get everybody doesn't get this, right? I understand that. But this body to me is what I have here on earth. I'm spirit. I'm a spirit. I, I believe that we're all spirits or souls, whatever you want to call it. And um, when I understand that, I understand this material universe really doesn't matter as much because I believe that we live on. And this, again, I, I hope I'm not 
you know, freaking some people out. But if I am, you might call me crazy. That's fine. I believe this wholeheartedly because I've seen too much not to. And so when I think about that, habits can restrict my spirit, my freedom to move around and do what I want to do. Um, so I'll just throw that in there as we're winding down here just to, you know, let, let everybody, I love expanding people's thought, expanding their mind and expanding their beingness with some of my experience. You know, what's really, what's really kind of uh, great about you is, is you, you will, you will push in a direction and then immediately you'll say, but wait a second, this is not the one size fits all and it doesn't apply all the time. So the consistency and the habits are good, but at the same time, be aware of the fact that that it, it's like a strength. It's like a, a, a superpower. But if you over-index on that superpower, it can actually become an Achilles heel or it can actually become a nemesis. And so there's there's always a balance and everyone is different. And so the idea of a habit uh, can be empowering and liberating if it grounds you, but it can also shackle you if now you feel that there is no other way. And so, you know, I think if, if people want to take something away, it is find the balance, but also find your balance and realize that it's never a one size fits all. Superpower, the superpower is being self-determined and making moves, doing what you want to do when you want to do it. That freedom, that's the superpower. And understanding that there's going to be times where you have to have consistency and you do things over and over and over again, but being able to just you know, free, free, be free. That's what, that's what my thing is, man. My, by the way, Joseph, my freedom, when I get, when I get to the level that I really am really shooting for, which who knows when and what it is, what that actually is, I'm looking for freedom for the purpose of being able to help people whenever the heck I want to flying wherever I want to, to do so providing for people for whatever I think is valid and needed without any concern for finances or time or constraints. That's my mission with all Stoppable to live in the life of their dreams. So I just love to, to put that out there for other people to think about for their idea of what freedom means to them. Now, listen, when you talk about flying everywhere, are you doing the flying uh, without the experience? Or I'm just, I just, you, I need to know who my captain is. Remember, captain, my captain. Remember, it may, may be me, but it's not the experience that you need. It's the knowledge that you gain from the experience that you need. Or making sure at least that I have a parachute, but I'm ju I'm just kidding. I, I want to spend the last just few moments on something that I know you feel very strongly about uh, about podcasting in general. I uh, I spoke about audio, the power of audio. Audio, your voice is the portal into your spirit and your soul. I'm a spiritual person as well, but you speak about not the uh, not the omnipresent, which is someone else, uh, but becoming omnipresent. Um, and, and, and I would love for you to talk about why it's important to be on shows. Yeah. About, uh, 2017, I had this urge. I was making great money. I've made millions in the mortgage industry, making great money. I wouldn't say great, good money, had a great house, married for 20 some years, uh, two great kids. Everything's healthy. We had life, right? But I was waking up in the morning unfulfilled. There was some kind of calling that I had. And I realized that it was, I have this ability and potential that I'm not experienced. I'm not, um, uh, really going after and, and trying to see how far I can take this thing. And I say this thing, I'm talking about this life, right? And so I decided, you know what? I'm trying so hard to get known on this local level for the mortgages and real estate. I need to get known on a global level. You know, if I can, matter of fact, if there's aliens, which I don't know if there is, there's talk that there is, if there's aliens. I want the aliens to know who I am because I want to help people and I need more people to know. So I just made a decision to do that. Now I got into podcasting because some guy invited me on his show. He made me feel special. He interviewed me. I didn't even know what a podcast was. I went on and I'm like, this is what a podcast is. I love this. I could do this all day. And I leaned into it. And I tried to get on as many shows as I could. I did not say no to anyone. First show, second show, 500th show, no audience. It didn't matter. I said yes. For the reps, I loved it. And I wanted to participate in connecting with people. I did over 400 shows on other people's shows in the last three years. I've gone, I've done over 300 of my own shows. Not all of them are released yet. So that's over 700 shows in the last three years. And what it's done for me is this guy named Mario said to me, he said, C-Rock, you're starting podcasting now. Just get ready. Buckle your seatbelt. This is going to change your life. I didn't know exactly what he meant at that time. He said, it's going to change your life and business. I, I got to tell you, Joseph, I got to tell you, it has been unbelievable. The credibility, the confidence, 
the content that I have, the unlimited content that I have to push all, repurpose and push out everywhere. I wrote my book based on podcasting. I've transcribed podcasts. I turned it into a book. Um, quotes, when you talk a lot, there's going to be quotes that people can get from you. There's probably several quotes, both you and I've had on this, that, that, are, that are quotes that people can wake up in the morning and look at and inspire them. Um, and, and, and then the other thing that people forget about is the Google search optimization for your name goes through the roof when you go and do a lot of podcasts, the title of your, of the podcast will have your name in it, that what you talk about is in there. It's all linked up. It's, it's phenomenal. So every single person that's in business has a mission, has a brand, uh, has a message should be podcasting. And that's what we're doing now. We decided to open up people building podcast agency. We help people get on great shows and do it consistently. Let me tell you. <laughs> That, that, that is an air horn to end all air horns. It is very personal to me what you just said because when I was sitting with a, a previous guest on the show coming up with the name, the rebrand from Corona TV to Joseph Jaffe is not famous, I said to him, to Bruce, I said, Bruce, I will go on any, sound familiar, uh, Mike? I will go on any show on any podcast. In fact, I love nothing more than going on the very first episode of a show when there's no one even listening to the show. And if I'm ever fortunate enough to have an agent or a manager and I find out that they said no to any podcast or show they wanted me on, I'll fire them on the spot. And it was at that moment within one second, he said, the name of your show is Joseph Jaffe is not famous because my next guest is. And so it, 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 matters and it means a lot to me to hear that that wonderful wonderful story of of generosity of giving of being able to share and 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 by the way in terms of quotable snackable moments unfortunately we didn't get any on on this episode except for uh how you do one thing is how you do everything 15 minutes pace yourself 60 minutes thrust is a must 90 minutes per perfection is not per uh, perfect 19 minutes uh timing uh, thrust through hell um and I can keep going on and on and on. Somehow, I don't even know. I should, have been, a do I should have been a doctor because I can't even read uh, my handwriting. But these show notes will be shared with you. I will create the sound bites. I'll create a blog article. Uh, I am fired up. I feel unstoppable uh, because finally, after listening, listening to him for a while, uh, Mike C-Rock, the C-Rock experience is now within the Joseph Jaffe is not famous experience. Uh, just loved uh, that 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 enthusiasm pushing out the energy into the world. Thank you so much, Joseph, for having me, man. I really appreciate it. And if anybody's interested in anything, talking about anything, want to run something by me, just best way to do it is to DM me on Instagram or pop in the Sea Rock Experience Club on Clubhouse. But Instagram is my favorite platform, and I answer my DMs all the time. Thanks for having me, Joseph. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Follow Mike on the Insta at Mikey Croc. <laughs> uh, not the Croc in Crocs, Mikey C. Rock. And uh, you know what? I have a feeling uh, that someone who is going to be signing up maybe for an online course or joining your podcast agency is none other than Chuck Norris. You are Chuck Norris approved. <laughs> absolutely approved and yeah he is you know as the old saying goes the reason why lightning never strikes the same place twice is because <laughs> chuck norris is looking for it uh i will be back tomorrow kind of pre-recorded with pepsi cmo todd kaplan uh have an amazing week and see you all soon take care, everyone bye-bye Thank you for watching the show about hope, positivity, optimism, and if there's time left over, a little bit of marketing with your host, multiple author and global keynote speaker, Joseph Jaffe. If you like the show, tell a friend or two. Please subscribe to the show. And if you want to get inside news, previews of upcoming guests and much more, visit josephjaffe.com slash subscribe to sign up for the show's newsletter. And despite the best ministrations of your wife, you still look ugly. <laughs> <laughs>